Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This year's Porty's Garage. On today's episode, you'll notice we have the 911. It's on jack stands and it's level. You know what that means. We're gonna do the Tiptronic oil change. Let's go check out the, the tools and the parts we're gonna need. Okay guys, here's what we have today for the Tiptronic fluid change. I've got the Pentosin ATF-1. I went through a lot of different research trying to figure out which one to get. Um, and I came up with the Pentosin ATF-1. Uh, obviously you can get this directly from the dealer. It's gonna be a little more, more expensive, but this is what I'm gonna go with today after the research that I did. Uh, so I got the two bolts here to replace on the internal filter. Uh, gasket, uh, rubber gasket for the filler plug, filler plug, new um, drain plug there. And then over to the equipment we'll have today, obviously a light. We got an assorted amount of uh, Torx wrenches, the trusty Mc, uh, Milwaukee, um, the Durametric, because we are gonna have to check the temperature of the transmission fluid when we're doing the fluid change. If you remember from the Macan, we had to do the same thing. I used a different tool for that. Durametric for the 911. 17 millimeter hex. Now I did not have this, had to get one of these. Um, it's not something common in my toolbox. So note that 27 um, uh, Torx bit as well as a 15 millimeter and a 10 millimeter to get everything off. So that is the tool set that we need for today along with all the parts. Let's get to it. All right guys, we're here under the car just to give you your bearings here. This is the back part of the car right here, the mufflers. This is your oil paint and your oil filter. You go past this cross member and then you're at the transmission fluid. Um, first thing we gotta do is we gotta take this cross brace out so we can actually get the pan drop. So let's do that real quick. I've already pre-broke everything so it should be. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, push this out of the way. And also pre broke this, so let's get this baby. Right. Prefer not to get my tool all shaky. All right, there we go. Well, that's pretty dark. Yep, it surely is. So um, let's. Uh, it is pretty clear though. Uh, let's go ahead and let this drain. Um, one of the things they did say is that you should do this while the engine and, and transmission fluid is cool. Um, that way it all drains into the pan is when the transmission's hot, it's gonna be up in the gears and whatnot. So this way you can get the maximum out here. So let's go ahead and let this one drain and then uh, we'll come back when we're ready to take the pan off. Hey guys, one thing I didn't say, it's a, a hex eight to take off this drain plug. And also when I was taking off the drain plug, I was like, where's the crush washer? There's no washer on here. But see that little green piece on there? That's a, a little fiber washer apparently. If you look on the new one, of course it's gonna move on me. You can kind of see it there. It's kind of moving in there. So just a little tidbit of knowledge. Okay guys, we're almost done here draining. What I want to do is crack the fill plug to make sure we're good there. So hey, while Mr. Port is cracking that fill plug, if that last segment is a little shaky, you can blame Mr. Porty for not having a lift. There's no room to move around under here. <laughs> yes, a lift is in order. All right, got that cracked and nice and loose so I can take that off when we get the pan out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking off all the bolts. All right, you got it? Ready? Yep. I'm gone. There's a plug there. Hey, don't move it a second. Uh -huh. All right, guys, there we go. Got the uh, pan down. Let's uh, take this out. We'll clean her up and let this drain a little bit more. Okay guys, just kind of looking at the pan here, you got your magnets in here. There is some, some sludge on there. 
I'm not seeing anything much like when we did the Macan just there's no big flakes just some smudgering <laughs> um, you know that it's it's getting on there so um, I'm gonna call this a win for right now I'm gonna finish cleaning it up I'll take the rest of this gasket off um, get her all ready uh, by the time I get this done we'll be able to go take the filter off underneath all right guys, we got the pan nice and clean. Interesting thing on these magnets, they are truly just magnets that you know you clean up and you can just take out, right? Um, same thing with these. Uh, so we're good here. I'm not overly impressed with this gasket, but uh, we'll, we'll make her work. Um, got the drain plug again, uh, the fill plug, and then also the rubber uh, gasket for the fill plug. So this will go over here like this. So when we put that back in um, You can see there's a little groove there. It it mounts right in and that's for right here So one thing you'll notice the fill plug you're gonna come up through it and it's got to come out So I got a 90 degree fill plug uh, Thing to, to fill it up. So we'll use that when we put the fluid in uh, Right now, I think what we'll do is we'll get back under the car and get the internal filter off and replace that. And then we'll put this back on. Okay guys, well enough drained. Let's go ahead and get this filter off. Again, T27 Torx bit, two screws, one in the back, one in the front. <laughs> a little bit more than I anticipated there. So we'll let this drain a little bit before we put the new uh, filter back on. You want to clean your face off maybe? Yeah, okay. maybe. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys, we got the filter off. Interestingly enough, on the Porsche workshop manual for this, they say to put a little bit of uh, Vaseline on the gasket here for the filter. So went ahead and did that. Let's get her pulled back in. Okay. There we go. That yeah, fits nice. Now I got new screws for this as well. Um, you are supposed to tighten these down to four and a half foot pounds. Um, I don't have a torque wrench that will go that low. So we'll just give it the old college tightening. Snug it up a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy with that. Where's your four? Four pounds. Tick. Tick. All right, I think we're ready to put the whole pan back on, guys. Let's go grab that and come back down. screws back in went on a lot easier than I thought um, now we're gonna torque them up seven and a half foot pounds and you got to use the star pattern keep going across and across I'll get this done off camera it's not worth to see but uh, once we get that done I'm gonna torque up the drain plug to 29 foot pounds and uh, then we'll start to fill all right we'll catch you guys in a minute Okay guys, we got the pan back on. We got it torqued down to seven and a half foot pounds, uh, which was really difficult with the crappy torque wrench. And then we did 29 foot pounds for the uh, drain plug. Now we got the fill ready here, ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this up and uh, see how she goes. Okay guys, we got to refill the canister and uh, then we'll finish filling her up. See you in a minute. Okay, we got her back filled up again. Let's start the pumping. Oops, 15. You got some air and then you'll be good. There we go. Now the interesting thing guys, this was a really dark colored fluid. You saw that when we first came out. 
It's a lot lighter going in. Oh, looks like we're getting a drip, Mike. A little bit more here. I think we're good. Okay, that should be about good for this part. Um, next part, let's uh, fire up the car. Go through the gears. You're supposed to go through each gear for about 10 seconds each. Um, also need to make sure that the tr uh, transmission fluid is not above 40 degrees Celsius before you start this, which it definitely shouldn't be. So uh, let's go top side, hook up the Durametric and see what temperature we're at. And then we'll start going through the gears. Okay guys, so we tried using the Durametric. It wouldn't connect properly and neither could I get the iCar soft that wasn't reading the temperature properly. So we're gonna use um, just the standard old uh, thermal gun. Right now we're at about 20 some uh, degrees Celsius. We gotta get to 30. Um, so what we're gonna do, it's gonna be kind of hard to film. I'm gonna go inside, start the car, go through the gears. Mick is gonna monitor the temperature uh, while I'm going through the gears. Once we get above 30 degrees. Safely from the outside. Safely from the outside. <laughs> Once uh, we get above 30 degrees or between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius, then we'll top it off again. We should be good to go. Hey guys, we had some problems with the equipment, so we had to get out the old infrared scanner here, uh, thermostat gun. So I'm gonna do a quick take. You can see we're at 37.4 right there. So we're between 30 and 45 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna just do another little squig here. Yeah, we're coming out pretty good now. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna shut that off. Try to get this thing out without killing myself. There we go. And then we'll put this back in. Yeah, try doing this with your hands all full of this. How much easier was that? <laughs> it almost looked like you knew what you're doing. A little bit of problem with the uh, 996 here in the Tiptronic fluid change. Uh, I took it for a test drive, everything worked great. Uh, was loving it. The next day I took it out and was driving it and it started to like slip going between uh, second and third and third and fourth. So the revs, RPMs would go really high and then it would engage. So did some research online and I think my problem is I don't have enough fluid in there. Even though it was draining out, it seems like I don't have enough in there. Um, reason why I came to that was one, research, and then two, when I looked at how much fluid I had left, um, I had like a, a, a liter and a half left and they usually say four, around four liters. So I think I might be maybe a liter, a liter and a half too low, um, e either way, or half a liter to a liter too low. So what we're gonna do is I got this back up on jack stands in the jacks, gonna go ahead, uh, crack open the fill, fill tube and hopefully uh, you know, we don't get a lot that falls out there. And then I'm going to go ahead and start putting some more back in. So I'll follow the procedures once you get to the point where you, um, you know, you get it filled up. So we'll fill it till it starts coming out. Then we'll run the engine um, and then fill it up some more. And then we'll try to get it up to temp between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius and let it run out there again and kind of see where we land. So. Uh, fingers crossed, let's get to it. Okay, I did go around and check and make sure there was no leaks. It all looked really good, uh, really dry. So I cracked this. Let's see what we got here. And there is a lot coming out. What I'm gonna do here, guys, is I am going to uh, go ahead and start up the engine get it up to some temp here and kind of see where we're at. Um, obviously, when it's cold, it's gonna be thicker, so that's probably why I got some coming out. But this is not making me happy so far. Great. Okay guys, this might be a little loud, but I am doing this with the car idling. That's what it said to do. The oil pan is about 36.2. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to try to crack 
crack this, see if we have any food escaping. Not really. So that's kind of a good sign if we think we're low. Yeah, I don't have brother-in-law Mick here to help me with this, so I'm gonna have to try to do this on my own. I don't think I'm in there. <laughs> there we go. a problem I'm out of fluid so uh, gonna put you on pause gonna head to the store get some more fluid obviously we're low okay guys back with more fluid and we've got no drainage at all Rip. Hey guys, got the top down out for a little test rip. Uh, it's going to be kind of noisy, so I'll, I'll let you guys hear this one. Here we go. Absolutely no slipping at all. Shifts like butter. Hey guys, back from the ride. So she shifted like butter. I think we're good to go as a note on how much we used between the two processes here or the two days uh, about six and a half liters i had about 0.75 in the can today that, that dripped out so that was just a little over five liters of course i had some that dripped out last time so let's just say a, a full five liters on that all right let's get back to the rest of the video There's okay a right here if you want to ride quick uh, we'll just get her going here and then we want to do 59 foot-pounds of torque on this baby Good to go All right guys, let's go top side and wrap this one up we got a cross brace first. Oh, good call, Michael. Let's get the bolts together for that and we'll put the cross brace in. Okay, Mick, thanks for reminding me about this cross member. Let's go ahead and get this one buttoned up real quick. So does it give you any torque for that? I did not find a torque spec for this. It's into aluminum. Uh, it was really easy to come off, so I'm just gonna tighten her up. And how come you're not climbing from the backside? Too damn hot. And there we go. All right, let's button this one up. Hey guys, that was quite a job. I gotta say it really sucked, <laughs> but that was mainly because the car was too low. You really gotta get it set up so your car's much higher than, than what we have here. It was just a bear to get under there. My neck is wrenched, Mick's neck is wrenched, and you're really close to the hot exhaust. So make sure you get something to get it up a little bit higher. In, in Porty's garage right now, we got the, the cheap old jacks here, uh, ramps. So uh, the other thing that I'll point out is I could not get the Durametric or the iCarSoft to read the temperature on the transmission oil fluid at all. It just said 78 degrees Celsius and I knew that was way off because we hadn't even started the car. So we had to get out the, the infrared thermo scan to do it the old fashioned way. You know, you just got to make sure you have a bevy of tools in the garage in case you run along an issue like that. But hey, that's uh, that's a wrap for this job. Uh, good to have done. Uh, hopefully we're seeing some really good shifts now as we, we drive it throughout the week. Uh, make sure you put on your post notifications, subscribe and like, help out the channel, and we'll see you guys on the next one.